Hey there YouTubers, if you watched my last video, I've been battling with emissions on my vehicles. The one behind me up on the lift is, is no different. Uh, if you look at my review of the scan tool video, uh, you'll see that I was getting a P0420 code. And with the scanner, I've determined pretty much I need to replace the catalytic converter. However, my wife found some information on YouTube, and I'll, I'll link videos in the description to the original uh, two videos that I watched. And I figured, why not give it a try? It's $5 worth versus $200 for a catalytic converter. And that is to take these right here, spark plug non-foulers. They come in packs of two right here. I got this from AutoZone for five, six bucks at most. But what you do is you drill one of them out. See, each of them have a hole in the end. You drill one of them out until your O2 sensor, which I've already removed all the, off the vehicle, screws all the way down in there. Then you screw them both together and screw them back into the uh, pipe behind the catalytic converter. And what that's supposed to do is basically get the O2 sensor out from the direct stream of the exhaust so it doesn't uh, react as quickly and that is supposed to trick the computer into thinking that your catalytic converter is working better than it thought it did before when it threw the code. I figure why not, let's give it a shot. We'll see what happens. So I've got the spark plug non-foulers. I got the biggest drill bit I can find in the shop. Uh, it might not be quite big enough. And I got a vise and an O2 sensor. I've already removed it, so let's get down to it. I'm curious. By the way, this part number is 42. 009. It's 18 millimeters with gaskets. Now there were some there that were 18 millimeter without gaskets and there was also 14 millimeter variations of this. Um, I got the one with the gaskets so hopefully it mates to the bung on the vehicle very nicely. Okay, after very meticulously cleaning this out and trying to make it wider, it, it the end of the O2 sensor is not much wider than the threads, so it's real easy to cut into them. It's even worse with a dull drill bit. But between the file, the Dremel, and the drill, it's still not $200 worth of work. So. Let's get it all back to get it all together. I'm trying to crush that little gasket. Which I did. I don't want to over tighten it because it, it is real close. There's not a whole lot of metal in there. But there we go. There's our O2 sensor jig. Let's get it back in the truck. There it is, reinstalled. So let's let's get it off the lift. Don't forget to plug it back in. Let's get it off the lift. See if see what the code reader says. The 
let's look at the data. Sorry, it's dark. I'm trying to use two phones in my hand at once. This is not going to be hot enough to, to see what's going on, I don't think. Now you can see, even though it's not in closed loop, that bank one sensor one and bank two sensor one, they're jumping all around. But look at that third one, bank one sensor three. It's not changing much at all. That's exactly what I want to see. All right, well, I'm going to drive this thing around, get it in closed loop, and see if uh, the light goes off by itself. <laughs> 